Janie Galore, and this is Lit Happens, your celebration of the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Today we have a very special show, sort of a tribute show to Wes Funk. I have our guest Darwin Wagner with us today. Now, today we're talking about a book that Wes wrote but didn't have a chance to publish. We miss Wes in the writing, command, in the writing community. We especially miss him here on Lit Happens. When he asked me to take over the show, I said I would, but that I was expecting him to come back, and he didn't. But we still have Wes's words and so much of him to share. So today, I'm pleased to have you here with me, Darwin. Well, nice to be here. Thank you very much. So tell me a little bit about what went into collecting this book and, and getting it ready to, to have what we have here in front of us. Well, Wes has worked on it for um, uh, uh, probably two years prior to his death. Um, uh, and he always liked to write about diversity, and he took a new direction with that. And um, it's, it's, I say it's one of his best writings um, at, to date. Um, and he spent diligent amount of time um, sitting in that chair, uh, uh, in the computer chair, and asking questions, uh, asking for explanations about uh, buildings in Saskatoon, uh, uh, cars, that type of thing. So uh, it was. Uh, we had a great bond that way. Uh, him with his back to me, and and me facing his back, and him turning around and asking questions. And sometimes we just have a great laugh over it. And uh, yeah. So um, uh, it um, it's been sitting now for about a year and a half, and um, uh, the last thing I wanted was for the manuscript to get lost. So. Um, I was very fortunate uh, getting um, a grant money from the uh, government and um, we went ahead and used uh, a Heather with Nichols Publishing and, and got the book rolling. So yeah, I'm really pleased it's, it's out there and uh, I was actually looking at the newspaper today and it's actually hit the top 10 in the, in the fiction category. So. Good at, for Wes. At McNally, and uh, what a right. wonderful, another wonderful tribute. Now, Heather, at your Nicholsworth Publishing, worked with Wes on his other books, so she probably felt that there was some of her heart that was involved in this book Oh, as definitely. Well. I, you know, Heather is just great to work with, and I think she had a lot of emotional attachment uh, with this book, uh, more so than the, than the other ones because of Wes's loss. But, yeah, wonderful woman, uh, yeah. Great. And so we've had a launch and people were just delighted to listen to the readings. I was honored to be part of that. And, and if we can take a minute right now, I just would like to, to read about a page and a half. Sure, yeah, let's So do we'll read a page and a half from Frostbite, which is Wes's new novel. And one of the things that I really like about Wes's writing, you, you spoke about sharing about the cars and the Cadillac is something that, that's a delightful image that comes into play in this story. Right. But I really like reading books that connect me to places that I know. And Wes has taken us into the city that we love, and he takes us down the street and to these places. So I've chosen a little passage that, that takes us some places that we'll be familiar with. Mm -hmm. Belly growling, Deck's first stop was the Red Pepper restaurant where he devoured a plate of beef saute on vermicelli. He ate hastily, his to-do list heavy on his mind. The hectic pace of the eatery held his attention. For the middle of the afternoon, the cafe was abnormally full. When he and Marla were together on Saturdays, they'd sleep late and go out for a lazy late lunch and shopping. Back in the chilly breeze, Deck almost trotted down the crowded sidewalk, the frigid air increasing his gait. He was soon in the Midtown Plaza, stopping at Starbucks and grabbing a Grande Bold. At the engraving kiosk, he had a copy of a sweet key cut, an alien feeling sinking into his stomach. He continued through the hub of shoppers, aiming for a casual clothing store with reasonable prices on the second level. There were sales everywhere. Shop managers were in clearance mode, ridding the shelves of a remaining Christmas stock. A, a perky young salesgirl asked him if he needed assistance as he browsed through a rack of jeans. She half smiles. What is it you're looking for? He laughed out loud. I'm looking for everything. My wardrobe needs an overhaul. It was close to an hour later when Deck strutted out of the store, two bulging bags of clothing in his hands, jeans, sweaters, a few t-shirts. He hadn't been able to resist a couple tees with Art Deco images of Darth Vader on the front. 
As he stepped onto the escalator, the sign on the music store caught his eye. He darted inside and picked out ten discs from the discount bin, taking his time in his search for nostalgic favorites. The Clash, The Police, The Smiths. Marla had hung on to most of their music collection, and he genuinely missed his favorite bands. And I, I really so, love that. That paragraph that's got the music, right. it's got Darth Vader, it's, it's got some of the things that we know yeah. Wes really loved. Yeah, it, that was his love. It definitely, yeah. And you say you've still got, you've got boxes of his memorabilia and... and <laughs> yeah, um, I, I actually I, I moved everything out to the lake and I put it up in the attic and I've been out there now for a week and so uh, when uh, we were having some poor weather I, I went up there and started going through boxes so uh, a lot of laughter um, of just some of the uh, silly t-shirts that he was known for and uh, he liked to collect um, rock star dolls and that type of thing. So, yeah, a lot of nostalgia up there. And, and this, his stories, always, they always bring us to those places that connect us to, to those beautiful days when we were younger. And that's right. Yeah. One of the lovely things about Frostbite is it's a character that's, you know, in middle age like we are and, and looking back and, and going through changes. And uh, so there's something that's so, that's so personal in these stories that we can see ourselves and relate to, to what goes on. Yeah, uh, I think, you know, the general population that have read the, the, this book and, and books prior uh, always do feel that, that closeness. I mean, he didn't uh, uh, write with some facade. Uh, he, was, he was just Wes. And uh, this book, I think, is exceptionally well written uh, for that, yeah. Well, and I think that that happens. As people write, you, you write more words, and, and each story you write is stronger and better. And, yeah. and we definitely see the progression of, of how Wes's writing changed. Just like all of us writers, as we're writing, right, we, yeah. we get better and we, we, we want to tell those stories. And we're still telling stories about Wes. One of the lovely things that's happened in Saskatoon this year is that um, the Pride Latte, which is always a, a really wonderful part of Pride, the, the shared readings at the Francis Morrison Library, has been renamed. And I'm just going to read that, the West Funk Memorial Pride Latte. Right, so, yeah. And it's just, it's another another demonstration about how much the writing community misses Wes how much it meant to him and how much he meant to the community as well. Yeah, he was a real giver in the literary world, um, spending endless hours. I mean, he'd get up first thing in the morning and he'd be on a road trip with, uh, you know, another author and uh, going to small communities, uh, talking in schools or doing a writing workshop, uh, always mentoring people uh, as they sat over in the Broadway roastery. And uh, yeah, I, uh, the community, uh, I, th I think they, looked at him as the, the big teddy bear uh, lit guy, you know, in the, in the community, and, and uh, hopefully that's never lost. Well, and I think it's wonderful that even after he's gone, we still have some of his words to hold on and hold on to and to continue to, to hear those stories and read those stories and, and remember his voice as, as we that's read right. those stories. Just like when you were reading the other night at McNally's, uh, you know, I just, uh, you were making me laugh because... Uh, he, it seemed like he was standing behind you and his chest was sticking out and this, this face was ready to explode with excitement, you know, and I, I just, well, you saw, I mean, I was chuckling. Mm -hmm. Well, you had a, yeah. a beautiful grin and there's so many beautiful memories of Wes. Yeah. And that's all the time we have yeah. for today. Uh, can I just add that the, the proceeds from uh, uh, Frostbite are, are uh, actually being donated to uh, the Saskatoon SPCA. And I've also commissioned a, a three foot by four foot uh, charcoal drawing of Wes sitting in the Broadway cafe, uh, surrounded by uh, his favorite dead rock stars. And the proceeds of that will be going to the Saskatoon AIDS Society. So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, getting out there and promoting it. Wonderful. And so it, it just goes to show that even after you're gone, you're, you can still be giving and helping out with these wonderful groups and charities. Yeah, I'm more than happy to. Yeah, Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much, Darwin. Thank you. I'm Danica Lohr, and this has been Lit Happens. You can find past episodes by going to Shaw TV Saskatoon on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook or Twitter, and you can contact me at danicalohr at gmail.com. <laughs>